All right. Skunkworks build, continuation. <laughs> J-Log, start date, 2023. The Kraken Series AIOs from NZXT come in many shapes and sizes to fit your CPU needs. The Kraken Elite Series RGB coolers feature a 2.36 inch, 640 by 640 customizable LCD screen, showing system info or custom GIFs and images for a custom look, as well as the F-Series RGB fans and a single breakout cable for a simplified installation. If low-key is more your thing, then the Kraken Elite Series also comes in black and non-RGB edition. While retaining the amazing pump screen, and NZXT is now enabling animated GIF functionality on all base model non-Elite Krakens. To see the full lineup of the new Kraken and Kraken Elite coolers from NZXT, follow the link in the description below. So if you are not aware, I'm reviving Skunk Works. I've already done a part one where I completely disassembbled the, si uh, the not the system, but the case and deep cleaned and painted parts of it and stuff. In fact, let me get that up on the table here because we got to do some test fittings and some stuff. I got my... Uh, you guys remember that really expensive uh, order I placed with Performance PCs? That's 2,000 bucks. Uh. We're gonna play around with that $819 water block today too, but let's unbox this, let's take a look. Um, ironically, I placed another order for the radiator that they didn't have in stock. So I had the big, the thick boy, and then this one, because I'm still concerned about whether or not the size will fit. So I've got, I've got this as well. I've also put in uh, an order for the front rad, the 360, that I have not been able to make up my mind if I'm gonna use or not, mostly because I want the option. If I don't use it there, I'll use it somewhere else. It's pretty obvious. So if you guys aren't aware, Performance PCs, performance-pcs.com, I'm giving them a huge shout out. They have supported my water cooling builds for years. So I definitely want to uh, give credit where credit is due because these guys, look, there's no, you're not gonna find another place, and they're not sponsoring this message or anything. You will not find another store on the planet like Titan Rig, I love you, but even you guys don't carry nearly the quantity that Hank does over at uh, Performance PCs. So check them out if you guys are looking for water cooling stuff, PC modification stuff, you want custom cables made, you want po custom powder coating, distribution plates made, they do it all there. And you can just buy the parts too, like I did here. So anyway, moving on. So these are those Alpha Cool distribution, or not distribution, but reservoir pump combo thingies, which are kind of nice. Here are the radiators. So this should be my 280 for the lower radiator GPU. This is my 560. <laughs> they continue to get big. You want a perspective? Here's a 480. <laughs> That's a CPU block. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't order a GPU block. Ooh. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. I was like, how do I? So this is the thick boy. <laughs> Nick, get the scale. <gasps> no way. Dude, Dang. they look cyberpunk. Actually, I'm not even joking. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool now. <laughs> it's like color change tin. <gasps> I know what it is. It's a loincloth. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. I, I... Should that be my thumbnail? <laughs> Oh, t-shirts, nice, because mine are so worn out, I need new ones. <laughs> all right, lots of little stuff in here now. So these are those fittings. Remember all the extra fittings I ordered? I like when he looked at the order, he was like, wow, you ordered a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'll be taking a lot of the fittings out of my old build too. Um, just I'm trying to avoid tearing that build down as long as possible, because once that's down, then my streams are down too. And I, I took a little break from live streaming. Um, I would kind of want to get back into it now. So I need my system up and running. Anyway, CPU wise, I know this might disappoint quite a few people, 14900K. I have been using the 7950X3D in my home system for a while now. It has been good, asterisk. It has been good once I decided to slow my RAM all the way back down to like 5,000 megahertz. I have 62 megahertz sticks. It really sucks to leave 1200 megahertz on the table that I basically have paid for. Um, every other month or so, it decides like, you know what, those settings just don't work anymore. We don't want to boot anymore. We just don't want it anymore. And so I have to go in and tweak it and screw around with it and deal with blue screens until it decides like, you know what, okay, we'll work again. And the performance is good. It's great actually, when the system is running properly. I'm tired of tinkering with it. And the 14900K, although completely disingenuous on being a 14th gen, 
for all intents and purposes, our super top binned 13900Ks. So because I'm going with a Z790 board, which you guys have already seen, this is the Formula Extreme or Maximus Extreme. I think it's the Maximus Extreme. Yes. This block for it is gonna be pretty nuts. So I wanna, cause it's a, it's a mono block that's gonna cool the CPU. It's going to cool the uh, VRMs. It's also gonna cool our top slot SSD. And it also plugs into some header somewhere that's supposed to give it like water, like water flow indicator and temperature and all that stuff. What I also bought is the um, Thermal Grizzly uh, contact frame for 13th slash 14th gen. I also bought, I don't know where it went. This is like 50 bucks, but I also bought an Amazon one that was $10. <laughs> so I kind of am curious now which one performs any better or any different. I want to take a look these guys right here. This is the part that I was a little bit conflicted on what I wanted to use for my pump res combo. Alpha Cool over the years has definitely improved on their designs. And I don't just mean, I don't just mean like functionality. I mean, aesthetically Alpha Cool for the longest time to, in my opinion, made some ugly stuff. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That made some <laughs> ugly stuff. We've got our fittings on the top. So we've got a return fitting there. And then we have a bleed fitting and a fill fitting. So here's the thing. If you have a return line, you can use a fill, one of the fill tubes, right, as an inlet, but if you don't have another opening to let air out, it just gets all backed up in the tubing and takes forever for it to, to, to bleed out. So it's nice to have three options on the top. So I'm gonna have two of them right here. Oh yeah. I was worried about them being, like, I wanted them to be about the height of the motherboard so I could center them on the motherboard. And I'm gonna have one there, and I'm gonna have one there. You can see why I was conflicted, right, on whether or not I wanted to do the front rad, because if I'm gonna have two here, plus the thickness of the radiator, I need to make sure there's gonna be plenty of room. But the fans for the front rad would be contained inside the cage. So it wouldn't be fans plus rad. It'd just be the thickness of the rad, about 45 millimeters. So I think I got plenty of room for that. Those two right there, side by side, are gonna look really, really good. And hey, I already made holes to put the wires through. So the very first thing I'm gonna have to do actually is install the CPU and the contact frame. I put the contact frame on Phil's system and you said you lost a few degrees, right? Yeah, a few degrees, it came down a few degrees. But I haven't been able to figure out. The 12th gen version is like half the price of the 13th slash 14th gen. But the only difference I could find oops, is this little notch right here. So I, and I put a 12th gen version on Phil's system and it's running fine. And 13th and 14th are lumped together as the same, because they're the same CPU, right? So. But the socket wise, you can run a Z790 in a 12th gen and vice versa. So I feel like it's a marketing ability to keep the price up. But because I was worried about compatibility, I suckered out and bought the more expensive one. I also counted it by buying the $10 one. Let's look at that one. Now look, I am the first person to say support the original and Devour is definitely the, the original here with Thermal Grizzly. But I, I almost feel like the price of $54 is a little bit, um, I don't, it's just, it's a piece of milled aluminum, right? With some screws. So I don't, it doesn't even have the markings on there anymore. Remember how they had the markings on 12th gen one to show oh, yeah. you how far to turn? Those markings aren't even there anymore. That's why I just, I had to, to, to look at this one, this nab cooling one, which obviously anyone making a contact frame now is just basing it off of devourers, but, $9.99. It's like, you're not gonna see it. And it's like arguably prettier. <laughs> it's exactly identical underneath. They put a piece of plastic right here, plastic and plastic, where that's metal, metal, metal. This is plastic. I don't think it'll necessarily matter, but I guess for damage or scratching the motherboard, this is plastic right here. There's clearly nothing different design-wise in terms of why you would need a different 12th gen versus 13th gen. I honestly, the, Loved their power, but I think this was just a cost increasing naming with a little mill difference to look like a different gen. So as I, as I said, I, I, I want to support the original design and I supported the price once for this, but, and I'm gonna put that on my system, but I, clearly between $55 and $10, there's some lost in manufacturing there. So you might be wondering why I'm using the Asus motherboard. I've already talked about this in the previous video, but I'll talk about it again. I already have it. I already had them. 
I already had it. And then this full cover water block supports this board. And I, to be honest, just wanted something that was gonna be extreme, not just that it's in the name, because Skunk Works was always about a really over the top type of build. And that's exactly what this motherboard represents. So don't confuse this for like, oh, Jay's working with Asus again, because I'm not, I already had it. I have not had any discussions about motherboards or anything in any of our builds ever since that video went live. We are still talking to them behind the scenes though, finding out what's going on internally with the culture, what's going on with their terrible RMA processes. So don't take this as endorsement, uh, even though one could say, well, you're using it, therefore that's endorsement. So I get it, I understand exactly how that looks, but it's really comes down to the fact that I already had the stupid thing and this water block exists for it. Past that, there's zero attachment to this particular brand. With that said, moving on, I now need to look at the manual for this because I know a lot of this crap has to come off this board, but I need to unbox that board real quick and see what is even in it. We'd love to see your finished masterpiece. That's, I mean, how bold will. of them to assume I will finish it. <laughs> oh look, it comes with a conduct, conduct a knot automatically. It comes with a contact frame. Oh, like specifically for it? <laughs> Did I just go through all that for nothing? It's a direct die conversion. I was like, this is not a direct die block, right? I was about to be pissed. That's cool. The unfortunate part is you've now paid for something you may not be using. Um, I guess it helps for EK just be like, you know what, we'll include it. It's 900 bucks, we're making our money back, right? <laughs> As you can see, it's got the standard IHS version on there. And it's always easy to tell because that clearly is the giant square. Whereas this guy here, as you can see, is just the direct die portion. This portion right here is the part that actually touches the, um, the SSD that goes underneath the screen. So there's that. And you can see right here, it's actually got some, some pins. So I can actually monitor my water flow. So I can set up an alarm that if my pump were to stop working for some reason, it would say, hey, pump's not working and you could actually have it do a, uh, an emergency shutdown on the system. And this is going to replace a really good chunk of what's on here. I believe this is gonna go like this, like that. And then the water block fits within there. Dang, you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else do I have here? There's more parts here. Oh, it even comes with the D-Lid tool. And then here's the back, the back piece that you have to use for the direct die. Actually this, yeah, this is the back piece for the direct die right here. I think I just have to remove this center section here to be able to mount on here. I'm pretty sure. You're getting a lot for your money. The unfortunate thing is if these are not parts you're interested in, like I'm not gonna de-lid, so I don't need the de-lidding tool and I don't need the de-lid or the direct eye contact stuff. It's extra parts that you paid for that I guess you could use later on, but you're paying for it now. So I was like, cool. So I, I just pulled up the tape, but there are connectors here. Be careful of those. I'm actually going with a four terabyte T700, 11 or 12,400 megabytes per second. We did a review of this drive. Um, you do get the advertised speeds. <laughs> so this is gonna be the first time I've ever run a four terabyte drive in any of my systems. Dude, that's gonna hold so many games that you don't play. The reason why I'm going with a really big drive under here is I want no chances that I have to somehow try and access it in terms of storage reasons. <laughs> Not to mention the last time I used Skunk Works, if you guys don't recall when I took it apart, it had two and a half inch SSDs in there and three and a half inch, four terabyte Western Digital Black spinners. So let's date ourselves. <laughs> Not physically. Okay, so it does actually come with its own. <laughs> All right, buy the cheap one. I've now double supported Debauer, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this one is, I, I have a feeling I should just use this one. Here's the irony. This is the exact same as like the 12th gen setup. <laughs> As yeah, a, with no notch. <laughs> with no notch. Oh man. <sighs> okay. All right, so I have the retention system installed, the back uh, plate holder installed. I had to take off the rear of the socket holder as well. Uh, so the one that comes with it is now installed. So now I have, I guess I can go ahead and go forward with the $10 one versus $50 one comparison video. So anyone potentially doing this install needs to be aware of an, uh, an error in the manual. So if you look at the manual right here, the red area shows where the one and a half millimeter thick 
pads are supposed to go. So you can see this is the lower area where the fatter area is, then the thinner area is basically where it's raised. So check this out. Here's, here's what I mean. This is the raised area, I just did the lower one. The lower area down in there has these pads, I'm supposed to put one more right there. The thing is, there should be a strip going along here as well based on these pads. You can see these are MOSFETs. So these are chokes, these are MOSFETs. They have me cooling these, but not these. Because if we look at the manual right here, you can see where the screw is in that raised part that comes down should also have a thermal pad just like it's showing on the top and the bottom. So that is wrong. They should have a thermal pad on that. If I did not catch this and did not put a thermal pad right here, I would not be cooling those VRMs right there. They would just be hovering, this would be hovering above it and they'd just be sitting there getting hot for no reason at all. Um, that is something that needs to be revised in their manual like immediately. EK, we'll be sending you an email with this clip of this video, this part, saying fix your stuff. Kind of important right there. <laughs> okay, so here's the thermal pads where they belong. I've also transferred over the matrix, good Pelix, weeb screen thing, whatever they named it. I forget what they name it. Anime matrix. Anime matrix, weeb matrix, same thing. The water block will be touching up in here. So the heat's gonna go through this thermal pad, through the metal, through the thermal pad into the water block. And that's gonna be reinstalled, you know, roughly back down in there. Obviously that'll be plugged into the screen. So you see it has a very OEM kind of a look to it. So as we were kind of going through the installation here, we're kind of like, okay, the cost, right? The, the monoblock SSD cooler, it's got the replacement heat sink here. Um, you know, things that can add up to maybe adding the cost. You got the delating tool, you got the delid, the dual function of either direct eye or non-direct eye cooling. Tube of liquid metal. Yeah, tube of liquid, I mean, it's not that expensive, but still. But you lose the OLED screen. Honestly, one of the most useful tools, yes, there is still a number Q code readout right there, but one of the most useful tools in any of the ROG motherboards is this OLED screen, which will actually tell you why your system might be hung. It shows temperatures, it shows voltage, all kinds of cool stuff. And I do glance at mine on the AMD rig at home quite often, even though I have a sensor panel. But when it comes to troubleshooting a system of why it won't boot, this is huge. Because instead of having to look at a number and be like, what's that number mean? It actually tells you the fact that you lose this right here. This is a, this is a egregious oversight as far as I'm concerned from EK. And I know why they did it. They did it to make room for these guys right here. These are lined up perfectly so that on this motherboard, when you put this down, the exact position of those tubes line up with the graphics card so you could come straight out of the graphics card and go right into it in a parallel config. But because this hangs down as far as it does, I can't even choose to like, oh, let me just take off the SSD cooler and throw this guy back on there because it hangs down so that these line up where they need to with enough meat. In fact, it looks like they could have probably even made it work somehow. So they've made the choice to have you just lose the screen altogether, which is pretty awful. Now, here's the thing. This is just a cable and I could try and figure out how to mount this somewhere else. I just am like, that is a crazy, crazy trade-off in my opinion. This, this is part of the price of the board, a good chunk of it. All right, let me get the block mounted. I'm committed at this point. Let's get the block mounted down. All right, so we are going graphene pad on this guy because no mess. I don't even need to trim it down even though it says to trim it because it just, it's just gonna contact the frame, which isn't gonna make any difference at all. All right, so the block is on there. The pogo pins are all aligned. And what's gonna happen here is that these, this header right here is gonna attach with this harness down on the bottom down here is where the water cooling zone is, where it's got like the water flow meter and all that sort of stuff. So our lunch just got here. It's time to take a break to go eat because we're fat and uh, we'll be right back. So for fans, I've decided to go be quiet. <clears throat> I have used Lee and Lee in like, God, I don't even know how many last builds. <laughs> we like the Lee and Lee. We like the daisy chaining. These are not daisy chainable fans. I might come to regret this decision later. I'm not entirely sure. But I, I do honestly like the silence that these fans, uh, like their, their low noise operation is 
Well, there's a reason why they're called Be Quiet. They really are the quietest fans on the market. You know, technically the only parts I have not received to be able to kind of go from beginning to end right now is the mid plate, which is on its way from Australia right now. Also too, Singularity Computers is gonna be building me, or has ordered for me a tempered glass side panel for it as well. So I'll be replacing the acrylic panel in the frame with tempered glass, which would be really nice. I was also thinking about going with the Be Quiet 1600 watt power supply, but that's a little overkill. The irony of me saying that, right? No, the real reason why I don't want to go with that is the 1500 watt and up, no, even the, no, 1500. 1500 watt and up have a different plug on the back of the power supply versus the standard three prong you would see in normal power supplies. So I think I'm gonna stick with a 1200 watt so I don't have to run a new cable at home, which I have all zip tied and wired through my desk setup to switch it out with a big fat cable. So I want to sort of test fit this, like kind of attach it right now with the radiator, with the fans and see, cause I know I have enough depth to be able to have the radiator and the fan on this side of the bracket. Um, it just, it looks cleaner if the fans are on this side. So obviously I'm gonna have a lot of wires to do with, with the fans in this setup, but it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I, I just, I wanna go something different. I'm also gonna be having Phil use our Cricut Cut to make me a black sticker that I can cover up the Be Quiet's with, um, just because the orange is killing me here. Really? <laughs> That's it? Dude, there's a lot of airflow in the back. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Huh. I might have to move them to the inside. You know what? I just need to do it now and see what happens. I've never actually done this. Okay, well, with them recessed, it's got kind of a neat effect now. One, that high pitch sound is gone. And two, it just adds more depth to the build. So you can see with the power supply right there, there's plenty of depth still to be able to do um, tubing stuff. I might flip the, the radiator around and have the fittings back here on this side though, to be honest. I just arbitrarily threw it on there, but I, I might still flip that around. So the 280 is gonna go here in the front half. If you're wondering why I didn't go full length, there's obviously any room for the power supply fan and length and cables and stuff down here. So I was about to put these light wings on here and I noticed I can put these on the outside of the cage because of the fact that the, the inlet is coming from this side, which is against the radiator and this won't be making the chopping sound against the grill because they're farther in, if that makes sense. But then I went, that's a waste to have the LEDs against the radiator, we won't see them. Then I remembered, I have Silent Wings Pro 4. So 3.64 millimeters H2O of air pressure versus the Light Wings 2.3. Okay, so here's my 280 rad exhaust setup. It is installed. But if we come around this side, here's my 360 front rad that just showed up. Uh, as you can see, the 45 mil thick version is not gonna work with the 480 up top. And the 480, as you can see, is not adjustable. If you look at the top, they are screw holes that are set. There is no rail that I can slide it along. See where my EPS wires are? Look at where my ports line up. So if I were to scoot this over anymore, then you would see my fans and stuff would be right over top of the EPS wires, which would make it even like impossible to plug those in or even have the height necessary to have those plugged in. Remember how I was saying, I'm not even 100% sure I want to run the front fan or the front radiator on this. If I want to run a front rad now, I have to go with the slim. So that much extra room would allow me to sort of slide the radiator up in there. And then the fittings have to be on the bottom because there's still no room between here and the rad to have fittings here. Until I have the distro plate, which Singularity uh, Computers has shipped to me already, and see how far forward it comes, because this, as it sits now, will basically touch this. I would probably even have to trim this metal piece. So depending on, see this is intended to come out, just so you have room for this clearance stuff, but I don't wanna see down in there like that. I want that closed off, and the distro plate's gonna cover this. Daniel did say at Singularity Computers that he did design it with 360 rads in the front to be compatible. Um, so I, I need that here before I can figure out what my next step is. I would have loved to have had a 360 on the front just for the overkill aspect of it. And some of you might be looking at this going, wait a minute, you're gonna have five exhaust fans and three intake fans? That's gonna be negative pressure, bro. Well, you're absolutely right. But that's why I always run the front fans and the top and exhaust fans on different headers so I can balance the airflow through RPM. So here are the reservoirs again. Um, the mounting mechanism for these is pretty simple. It just mounts to the back. You can also side mount it like on the floor if you wanted with these two little L brackets. These are intended to go on like a radiator or something or like even mount like 
in the front like this or something, but obviously I'm not doing that. I'm mounting it to the back wall because one of the things I always loved about the SMA8 is all this space. The only reason I do a dual loop in this case is because of its size. Otherwise, dual loops are not practical. They're a pain in the butt. Although it is nice if you're like, oh, I need to get my GPU out. I can drain that loop, get it out in the system. I could plug in a regular air-cooled card and the system could still work if I had to do something. Anyway, and part of the problem too is the fact that it goes to a SATA, which is nice because I've always been like, why are people still using Molex in 2020, whatever we are anymore? Um, I have a choice I have to make. I have to make a big hole and then maybe with like some sort of like a threaded grommet or something that I could make, have a, a U notch so I could like put the cables through and then like the grommet goes on, right? Or cut this, it's just ground in 12 volt. Cut this, terminate each end to like, um, I don't know, a three pin fan header or something, right? A male and female fan connector and then boop, and I could just plug those in, get are keyed. Then I could push the wire through and then plug it in. I have another idea. But first, let me just hold these up so you can sort of see. Oh, and I, I like the fact that technically these are daisy chainable where I could daisy chain the RGB together. I just hate the fact that they are using JST plug. I guess Alpha Cool just dare to be different from everyone else. So you have to use this adapter, which is now means more wiring I gotta F with. But anyway, let's hold these up there so you can sort of see how it fills in the loop, kind of how I was imagining. Do you see how different the system looks already like that? You can also see how the front rad idea is probably not gonna work out. Cause if you come around to this side, Phil, you'll see there's not a lot of space between the reservoir and the, the front area there. So I'm probably gonna ditch the idea of doing a front rad, but I also thought with these extra holes that are here, cause the way this used to be, that hole and that hole was the clip mechanism that the EK um, reservoir tube thing would kind of, it was like a U, like a U channel. And then the tube res would just pop into that. And those holes are very specific to that setup, which I'm not using. So what I'm thinking about doing is something very similar to how I did Red Mist, making a floating panel off of the back wall. So this is not the sheet I'm gonna use, it's just a sh thick sheet of acrylic. But basically what I would do is mount to the acrylic, make all the mounting holes and pass-throughs for cables and stuff for this. And by it being stood off by like, I don't know, some sort of a spacer from here, allows a couple of things. One, I could then do a, a bigger hole back here to have all the wiring go through, and then that's covered. And then two, it allows me to be able to do channel lighting around this platform so this whole area could illuminate. So depending on the fluid that's in there, that could light up, but I feel like it would just accent that whole area to have more lighting there since the RGB stuff that I'm using is not that bright. So the nice thing about the Lee and Lee lights, if, or fans, if I use those, it's double-sided lighting. So I would have had lighting on both sides of the front fans, which now it's gonna be dark on that side. And the only lighting I'm counting on so far in this is going to be the fans and the distro plate. So I'm debating now doing an ARGB strip around a floating platform. Now I've got to figure out what kind of material I want to go with here. If I go with ABS plastic, I'm afraid it'd be a little too textured. That's very textured. And although we do have some texturing here on the back wall, I don't think that looks incredibly out of place. It'll catch lighting, but I think it might be a little much. So these are the little things that make it take forever. But at the end of the day, it's these little things that make the build just that much better in my opinion. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. Part two of Skunk Works. As you can see, it's starting to come together. A little bummed about the idea of not doing a front rad, but quite honestly, it's okay. It was just gonna complicate things a little more. And this 480 up top is more than enough. All right guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you in part three of 28.